So in my last video I left you with the concept of relative risk and I said there were different types of relative risk however they are all ratios which means they will follow the basic format of intervention over control or exposed over unexposed. So if you keep this in mind um, that it's a ratio um, um, then you can figure out anything basically so if someone if you ever hear the term um, risk ratio you'll know straight away what that means risk you know is commonly used interchangeably with cumulative incidents so you'd know that that was cumulative incidents cumulative incidents in the exposed group over cumulative incidents in the unexposed you'd know that because it's a ratio it's exposed over unexposed because it's risk you know risk is used interchangeably with cumulative incidents so straight away you can figure out ah, that's what risk ratio is if someone said to you rate ratio you would instinctively know that that was incidence rate in the exposed over incidence rate in the unexposed and so on and so forth so these are types of relative risk risk ratio and rate ratio another one's odds ratio so you know odds ratio would be odds in exposed over odds in unexposed so basically you know how to work everything out now relative risk um, as you can probably figure out from this is really important because it's a measure of the strength of association between a disease and an exposure um, from now on I'm going to use the term disease and exposure rather than intervention and control just because it's easier rather than using two terms all the way through so relative risk is a measure of the strength of association between an exposure and a disease which is really good so if you if we do our sums and we get a relative risk of one that would imply that there's no difference so no difference so our exposure the exposure we're measuring has no difference on disease outcome so it's not a risk factor it's not a cause in the terms of intervention an intervention trial it would mean that our intervention is not making a difference if we have a relative risk that's less than one and in my previous example you saw we had a relative risk less than one I think it was 0 0.87 then that would mean it's having a protective effect if our relative risk is less than one let's say for example I think it was 0 0.7 in the last example but it doesn't really matter that would mean that out of every hundred people 13 less have died remember that this can be thought of as 87 percent if we take this away from one we get relative risk reduction of 0.13 a relative risk reduction of 13 percent uh, if you don't remember that look back at medical statistics too if we get a relative risk more than one then this implies a detrimental effect so whatever we're doing whatever intervention we're using is is actually harming more people than it's saving if we're looking at death we've actually killed more people with our drug um, so there you go um, that's that's kind of um, a good overview I think of, of relative risk of relative risk and what it's doing so the next thing um, that's quite useful for us is something called a population attributable risk um, and the other thing I'm going to go over is something called the population attributable risk fraction but I'll start with this population attributable risk this is the um, this measures the amount of the disease that is statistically um, attributable to our exposure
So to measure population attributable risk, I just want you to think about this because it makes perfect sense. We want to measure the amount of disease that is statistically attributable to our exposure. So in order to do that, that's a bit, it really it's quite simple. We just take the incidence of the disease in our, popu in, um, in our population and all we'll do is we'll minus um, the number of people who are unexposed um, number of unexposed people so I don't know let's say we think smoking causes lung cancer and we want to see how much of smoking is, is statistically attributable to lung cancer we take the incidence of lung cancer in the whole population and we minus the number of people who have lung cancer and don't smoke therefore we've got the population attributable risk the amount of the population who can attribute their cancer to the risk fact the risk of smoking so it makes see, perfect sense there's also another way of working it out which doesn't make which is a bit more difficult to understand and that's risk difference which we've covered in a previous video times proportion exposed so these are the two ways of working out population attributable risk the next thing we've got is population attributable risk fraction which I think is kind of more looking at um, the kind of disease burden I think so population attributable risk fraction and I know that to work that out that's just population attributable risk which we've just covered over the incidence in the population and then you times that by a hundred and that will give you the population attributable risk fraction so just remember that population attributable risk is looking at kind of the amount of, it, of disease that is statistically attributable to an exposure and population attributable risk fraction is looking more at the kind of disease burden um, I'm going to stop there um, I hope that was useful. Thanks very much.